Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're talking about climate change and the need for sustainable practices in Nigeria. Well, we have our guest Grace Oluchi. She's a co-founder and executive director at Climate Action Africa. Good morning, Matt. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, so let's talk climate change. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are asking, what does Nigeria have to do with climate change? Especially because we just went to COP28 with the president um, and some other delegates from Nigeria. And most people are like, climate change doesn't happen in Africa. Our, we our weather is warm all around. So why are we having this conversation, climate change? And we're also talking about sustainable practices. So just you know, walk me through climate change first, then we start to talk about the sustainable practices. Yes, I mean, uh, climate change and the science of it really is just say that there's global warming, there's this whole ecosystem that has to support the world. And as we, human activity, so things like driving your car, putting on your generator, cutting down wood to cook with, oil and gas industry, manufacturing, there are all these carbons and methane, there are emissions, what they call greenhouse gases, that go into the air and they keep affecting uh, 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 the global warming space and it's making it hotter. So temperatures have gradually been increasing for about 100 years now. And last year actually was the hottest year in human history. Mm. So everybody on the planet all organizations human activity is increasing greenhouse emissions which is causing climate change mm. so when i when i first asked and i said most people are wondering what does nigeria have to do with climate change you had a reaction like really is that even a you know is that even what people say there was that reaction but how important is it for us to start to look at climate change it is very important because as much as the data has shown that Africa has not contributed a lot to greenhouse gases because we are not as industrialized as the rest of the world, it doesn't matter because right now the sun or the ecosystem within which planet Earth exists is not going to destroy one place and leave another place if the world is going to collapse. Everybody is going to be affected by it, which is why climate action is actually global. Climate change is global and climate action as well has to be global effort. Uh, Nigerians who think it doesn't affect them, I want us to go back and look at our land, right? I think about 70% of land in Nigeria now is being affected by desertification. We have Lake Chad that is a major land and uh, 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 almost a cultural heritage that supplies most of the Sahel with water, which yeah. has shrunk by almost 90% in the last 30 to 50 years. So these are all things that are affecting us. Ask the farmers who are on the field. They may not understand the science of climate change, but as somebody who grew up on the farm, and I have conversations with my mom, I can tell you that they can feel it. We're seeing even cocoa farmers, coffee farmers, who are complaining that this freak change in weather patterns and, and, and climate is making their produce not come out as it should be. Mm -hmm. They're not producing the same yields as before. So it's affecting us whether we want to believe it or not, and we need to take action. Mm. Okay, so I have one cheeky question. In Nigeria right now, almost everyone from Abuja to Oweri to, um, to Anambra to Delta, everybody's complaining about the heat, right? Oh my God. It is so hot. Even here in Lagos, there is no wind, nothing. It's just like you're breathing humid air, really. So could climate change affect this like the weather right now and you know all of the heat that we're experiencing could that be as a result of climate change and maybe because we're not taking it seriously it is as a matter of fact that is what it is last year nimet said nigeria got to about 45 degrees mm. hot in some parts of the country and right now we are seeing 40 41 percent and it could get hotter because as a matter of fact when they met in the paris in paris in 2015 for the cop 15 uh paris 15 agreement it was agreed by global leaders that the world should not exceed 1.5 degrees in terms of temperature rise but last year 
we hit that mark. Mm. And it was a prediction that we we're not supposed to hit till 2060 and we're supposed to take all this action to see that we don't hit that. But we've hit that, which means that places are going to get hotter. It's almost like, I mean, I leave my house because it's AC. You go out in the morning for a walk and it's just stuffy. It's like, yes. what is happening? And that is climate change. There is Places are going to get hotter. Even places that were not hot before, we should start experience, should start experiencing more heat and increasing temperature. Wow, that's that's quite alarming because right now we need to start to look into this and take it seriously because, like you said, if if any part of the world is affected, we're all still in this world together and you don't have another place you're running to. So I think now exactly. let's start to talk about sustainable practices. Um, what are some sustainable practices we can start to, you know, even incorporate to our everyday life to ensure that we're taking care of our planet because or we're taking care of this ecosystem because basically that's what climate change is about we're probably doing things that we're not supposed to be doing and for that the ecosystem is just having like a revolt really so what are some sustainable practices that you would advise us to start to imbibe thank you um and i mean i'm going to call for patsy jollof later because that's like one of the biggest things <laughs> we've seen that uh last year the energy transition program released a report that said the cooking industry in nigeria was contributing about 22 percent to energy emissions wow. which means because 75 percent of nigeria uses wood kerosene and mm -hmm. clean methods so one of the first things that we can start to do as a country is transition our cooking how do we ensure that 100 plus million nigerians who use on clean cooking methods start using clean cooking methods to cook i mean there are all these innovative products now that use solar energy to cook we have our gases uh, uh, that are better for the environment than charcoal nigeria has lost i think almost uh, how many uh, hectares of land to firewood cooking and mm. that is those are part of the trees that should sustain uh, mm. our environment and absorb carbon because that's what happens the ocean and the trees is what is supposed to absorb the emissions that go into the atmosphere but because we keep cutting down trees we keep destroying this ecosystem then it becomes worse um plants have plants around your environment plant as much as possible because it's 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 what's going to save us i want people to volunteer with projects that are around tree planting and other sustainable practices in your house as well what's your energy consumption do you really need to have five acs on at all the t all the time with I this are heat now but <laughs> <laughs> with this heat most times you're like all of the acs need to be on because it's so hot but I, I get what know, you mean. That's the sac like let me well, that's, that's a sacrifice right now. <laughs> Yes, yes. So let some places like let's choose. They are, I mean, they're cleaner uh, energy sources. Like there are all these solar fans that consume less, yeah. and there are all these cleaner uh, uh, energy options that we could be using. Do you want to transition part of your house to solar energy? Do you want to reduce how much you run your generator? Mm. All these small things. How do you manage your waste at home? There's so many things. The list is endless. And I think that everybody just needs to do their own small part to ensure that you're, you're keeping safe your community. Because it could really it could really make or break what we see in the next couple of years. Okay. So I've heard, you know, the list of things that you've said, but some people might argue that going for these sustainable practices might be expensive because you talked about, you know, trees. We're cutting down our trees. So um, obviously the, the, what's supposed to be giving us good oxygen, we're taking it away and it's not absorbing the carbon. But some people in the villages will tell you that that's all I have. I don't even have money in this whole economic crisis of a nation that we're in. How am I supposed to get money to start to look for a cleaner source? Um, how, how, why would I not choose, you know, just cutting down a tree because it's faster. I just burn it quickly. I cook my food. I have to put food in my belly. So if I don't eat, is it not, in fact, let me use, let me use colloquial terms. Now, person, when you don't chop, now you think of ecosystem. So exactly. some people might actually argue that w what's your response? I think, so that's, that's the truth. And I do understand that predicament because, again, we're seeing poverty levels rise, which means sustainable so so options are becoming increasingly expensive. But what I want to say is that it has it's expensive for a reason, right? Mm. Um, for example, these innovators, it's costing them a lot more to produce these things because it, they have to import a lot of things. It's becoming really expensive. I think 
it has to be a two-way street. The innovators and the manufacturers of sustainable solutions need to meet us halfway. And we, as well as the people, need to meet them halfway, uh, 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 ensuring that we increase demand for some of these things. Because when you increase demand, what will happen? Prices will drop. Yes. And I think from the government side of things and even from the finance side of it, both public and private sector, we need to incentivize clean clean credits and clean financing and incentivize some of these changes. For example, I know the company Burn uh, is a clean company, clean cooking company that works in most of East and Southern Africa. They even pay people to use electric stoves to cook or mm. other clean options because there are all these schemes around carbon credits and all of that. I know it's expensive, but we need to increase the demand and we have to become innovative around how we price these products and you know how we make finance available for these people so that they can uh, increase production and we almost have like mass commercialization because i mean it's easy for everybody to find wood or charcoal to cook but how easy is it for you to find some solar cooking solution from the shelf it's that's that's where the problems are thank you mm, okay so i know you talked about people trying to you know just make sure they do these practices but um, I want to find out what's the role of the youth because I know youths are like, especially with the Gen Z's, they are so innovative, they're thinking, you know, future forward, right? So what can <laughs> we do to ensure this transition from this um, old traditional practices to the sustainable um, ones that you've listed? I think it's hard, but one of the first things that we have to do is we have to come to this realization that this is affecting us yeah. and some things are almost non-negotiable like clean cooking at this point we have a very short time to transition to clean cooking mm -hmm. and i also think that we need to come together and start iterating and looking at what what is the best way to maintain cultural heritage and tradition and also ensure a sustainable future because what is the point really of keeping a practice that will hurt the future that your children will exist in and we're having a lot of innovations now come up in the sector and i think that's something that could really help us and we also need to maybe go back to some policies and see how we create communal policies to ensure that we are creating this balance within uh, uh, the ecosystem preserving tradition and also ensuring that it is sustainable okay you talked about clean cooking right now some people will tell you that party jollof with firewood is the best so what happens <laughs> when I cannot eat my party jollof anymore? What happens? Like, am I going to now start to just eat bland jollof? But that's by the way. I just wanted to make light of the situation. We, you talked about policies, right? Um, what policies do you think the government can put in place for us to transition? And then we don't feel like, you know, we're being stretched out. Because a lot of times people don't like moving away from their comfort zone. You're like, oh, this is what I know. This is how my parents, you know, have brought me up. This is, I'm a product of my environment. This is all I've ever known. So you telling me to move over to something else because you call it clean. Who says it's, it's clean? Who says I have to do that? So are there policies that the government can put in place to ensure that people start to, and it may be incent, you know, just give like an incentive, just like the one you talked about, um, that can make people just move over to clean energy. I think yes, there are already some policies in place. So Nigeria has the energy transition plan that has been so supported by Sustainable Energy for All. Nigeria actually has the climate change and adaptation plan for 2020 to 2030 that was enacted uh, 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 by the former administration. There are policies in place, but now it's how to bring a lot more private sector and how to even mainstream this policy so that everybody is aware of it. Do we even execute these this policies? Exactly. So we need to be, there needs to be investment in education and awareness of these policies to ensure that there is mass adoption. It's almost like a mental re-engineering that has to happen so that there's behavioral change. And we also have to incentivize, like I mentioned earlier, it's important that we incentivize this, some of these policies. I think that's what has been the missing link for, uh, 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 for most of some of the policies that exist mm -hmm. there needs to be incentive because for us to actually create uh, uh, uh for us to actually create social change you can you have to either choose to punish or to incentivize and i don't think punishment is the way to go here because we're already being punished a lot by planet earth <laughs> and uh, climate change so we need to incentivize some of these policies to ensure that people can adopt it rather faster okay <clears throat> 
All right. So um, do you have like any words that you can just use to challenge people to start to um, take care of the planet, take care of our climate? I think, I think the best way to put this or to say it is, is to understand that we don't have a second home. I mean, uh, Elon and a few others, and I think uh, Bezos, yeah, they're trying to go to Mars or yeah, something okay. else. I don't know how many of us in Nigeria can afford to get on one of those rides, but this is what we have, as a matter of fact. This is all we have. Nigeria is all we have. Planet Earth is all we have. So we have to be intentional. I want you to even just think of the fact that 70% to 80% of us live off Mother Earth in this country. Because right. we are farmers, we are pastoralists, we are whatever you have. We eat from Mother Earth. We survive because of Mother Earth, oxygen mm -hmm. and all of that. So there is no other option than for us to take care of it than for us to listen to her crying and say that okay how do we make this work we need to go back to living in harmony with nature so that it can continue to preserve and protect us all right uh, i think i for me i I love the fact that we talk about climate change because I am passionate about the environment. Um, so I wanted to ask, how do people, are there like partners? Because I want to believe there are people like you who are championing these causes. So are there partners, people we can partner with? Um, is, there, is there a way we can even do more? Aside the awareness, um, talking about it is one thing, but doing it is another. So are there maybe NGOs, anything that we can actually partner with? Yes, yes, and yes. I mean, there's, there's amazing, amazing projects. Um, in Abuja, for example, you have Clean Technology Hub that they're always looking for volunteers to work with. Um, you have projects around, I think there's Izano Africa that's always doing something with farmers. We have Farm Crowdy, we have Sun Pump, there is even We Cyclers, Recyclers uh, Points. There are all these amazing organizations that are trying to do something to advance uh, 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 climate action globally and in Nigeria that I think the youths can volunteer with, you can donate to. I remember Frank Crowdy actually used to crowdsource for funds and I don't know how that went and I did not see the final report of that. Oh. But then how do you donate to some of these exercises? How do you volunteer? How do you give your time? How do you even give your resources? So it must not be money, but how do you just go sit on the table and co-create with these people? If they invite you for strategy sessions, go because your input about your community could shape how the design programs and policies and initiatives that better support us okay so i want to ask now the role of innovation technology um i because i believe that technology is the way forward in fact technology is the future and the future is here so is there a role that technology plays in all of this with the climate change Yes, 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 and yes. I think technology is going to be one of our fastest ways out of this. And we're seeing really amazing innovations come out from home, from, from ground, from roots here, right, in Nigeria and from abroad. Um, for example, I mentioned Sun Pump earlier, and they are like an off-grid solar pump for smallholder farmers, enabling them to continue their work. This farm crowd that is using data analytics, real-time data, to support how farmers uh, uh, produce. We're having technology that is also increasing like things around seed resistance from diseases to ensure that farmers can have better yield. Um, and this is not GMOs, just to be just to be clear. And we also have people that have solutions around flood forecasting and droughts and desertification that early warning systems that can be able to pinpoint people to, okay, maybe this is the action that you need to take. We have even now, there are even solutions for uh, 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 carbon uh, intensive housing, like even the cement that you use to build your house could mm. be contributing to climate change. So there are better options that technology is producing now. And I think recently, even the big tech like Google, they've launched uh, through Google Maps, they're trying to map out where we have methane leaks on planet Earth, which means where are the hotspots of these emissions and what can people do around that area or how can government even put more pressure on people in these areas to see that they stop whatever activity they're doing or that the transition needs to better uh, uh, enable sustainability of, of, of the earth. So there are all these amazing technologies that are coming up and people keep innovating and that's what we want to see uh, innovate around regenerative agriculture. Like I mentioned earlier, 70% of Nigeria's arable land and farmland is being threatened by desertification. How do we ensure that we can regenerate our soils for better, for better production, for better yield? Okay, Thank so let, let me bring you 
to Africa? Because when we started, you talked about Lake Chad um, drying up, really. And I wanted to find out, is there, are there ways that, you know, the African countries can collaborate together to find effective solution? Fine, I know it's, it's not just about Africa because it's the world at large. And if something is wrong in other parts of the world, Africa is also affected. But let's start from where we are because we can say, oh, yes, we have these lofty ideas. We want to do this. We want to do that. But you have to start from where you are. So from here in Nigeria, from here in Africa, are there ways you know we can collaborate together to look for effective solutions that can work they might not be um they might not be swift in the sense that people would just some people can be resistant to certain things but can they collaborate to start to you know sensitize the people create more awareness and then start to even work with the international communities on how we can find effective solutions yes yes and yes and um, i think as much as it's not just about Africa, it is about Africa because nine of the 10 most vulnerable countries to climate change are actually in Africa. Wow. And Africa is probably one of the most vulnerable at this point because we've not had adequate infrastructure to support us in case of massive disasters. I want us to imagine the rains and the storms that took Europe in 2021 and 2022. If that happened in Nigeria, almost African cities, would we have anything left? I want us to just think about that. So Africa is really exposed at this point and vulnerable. So it is about us. And last year, September, we were really excited to see Africans come together in Nairobi for the African Climate Summit and have one voice and say, this is what we want to see achieved on our continent when it comes to climate change. So there's already the Nairobi Declaration. That is a full body of work that shows the different calls to action and, and, and uh, commitments that Africa can make to improving, uh, to attaining climate action for itself and the global community. And this document is so powerful because it draws inspiration from the Paris Agreement from the UNFCCC, other frameworks, and even from some AU frameworks to say that this is the way to go. And in terms of what Nigeria can do, yes, we can start collaborating on energy projects. We cannot do it alone. How do we leverage the resources of our neighbors? How do we even share our resources with our neighbors to ensure that we are creating a sustainable ecosystem? Because guess what? If we protect ourselves and Niger or Cameroon is not protected and there's anything that happens there, they're going to there's going to be an influx in Nigeria. So this is not the time because displacement is happening right they're yeah. going to come into nigeria and this is not the time for anybody to say i want to go at it alone there needs to be a lot of collaboration between governments between partners cross borders private sector how can you working in energy in nigeria collaborate with the people in niger in cameroon in togo in Benin? How do we come together to ensure that we are creating collective action because that's the way we're going to accelerate results yeah i love that i think this is a good way to just land it collaborating working with one another and just finding ways to protect um the ecosystem finding ways to protect the climate anyways i want to say thank you for joining us i really learned a lot um from you and i'm sure our viewers at home are just like oh yes i want to i have jotted out a few things that i want to start to imbibe into my daily life but i want to say thank you so much grace ology thank you for coming and just bringing your wealth of knowledge to us thank you so much Thank you so for having me. All right. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Okay, we've been speaking with Grace Oluchi. She's a co-founder and executive director of Climate Action Africa. And we've just been talking about um, climate change and the sustainable practices we can start to imbibe in our everyday lives. Anyways, this is where we wrap it up. But first, let's just check out our quote of the day. Okay, so our quote for today says, don't worry about the pressure or the responsibility. Just live in it, have fun, and when everything seems to be going right, just stay humble and remember your family. Do not think about the pressure. Do not think about the responsibility. It's okay to think about it, but don't worry about it. So that is the charge. Don't worry about it. Just be humble. Think about your family. Enjoy. Have fun, right? You only live once. That's, that's one thing that we young people like to say. You only live once. So enjoy. Live in the moment. Anyways, this is where we wrap it up on the breakfast today. It's been an amazing ride this week. Well, we'll do it again next week 
week. I'll see you on Monday. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing weekend.